U.S. border a bigger priority than Ukraine. Republican leader, Congress will not pass a new aid package for Ukraine without reforms to U.S. immigration policy, House Speaker Mike Johnson has said, arguing that America's own security takes priority over Kiev's conflict with Russia. Speaking after a contentious meeting with President Joe Biden and congressional leaders, Johnson insisted that House Republicans would not budge on the foreign aid if Democrats did not compromise on the border. GOP lawmakers are actively pursuing and investigating all the various options for the Ukraine legislation, but the first priority of the country is our border and making sure it's secure, Johnson told reporters. The Republican speaker has faced increased pressure from congressional Democrats, the White House and even fellow GOP members in the Senate over the aid bill, with President Joe Biden warning that the consequences of inaction every day in Ukraine are dire. Ahead of his meeting with Johnson, Democratic Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, who attended the sit-down with Biden, also said he urged Johnson to get it done and do the right thing, adding that history is looking over your shoulder. He described the discussion around the Ukraine bill as intense, stating everyone in that room was telling Speaker Johnson how vital the military assistance was. While the Senate previously passed a $95 billion aid package, including $60 billion for Kiev in addition to funding for Israel and Taiwan, House Republicans have refused to back companion legislation unless it includes significant reforms at the U.S.-Mexico border. Pentagon warns Russian drones may fly to Europe. Russia could have stripped Ukraine of its independence in 2022 and sent drones from its territory to Europe. Assistance to Kyiv from the United States thwarted this, according to Celeste Volander, Deputy Secretary of Defense for International Security Affairs. Volander said that those UAVs that the Russians are sending from Crimea over Ukrainian cities could have attacked European capitals. The cruise missiles that the Russians use against Ukraine's critically important energy infrastructure would have threatened U.S. allies in NATO. According to her, Americans in Europe, from military personnel, businessmen and ordinary citizens to American students studying in Europe, would have been in danger. All of this was prevented by American support for Ukraine and, above all, the courage and skills of the Ukrainians, Volander emphasized. And the threat to Europe is still relevant in light of delays in the U.S. Congress vote on aid to Ukraine, Volander said. Volander said that Ukrainians have learned to fight and are holding back the Russians, disrupting their operations in the Black Sea and have resumed grain exports, providing the Global South with what it needs. But since there's not enough ammunition, air defense systems, spare parts needed on the front lines, it could very well return to the scenario of 2022 and the threat of shelling Europe. She reported that the United States ranks 16th in the world in terms of the ratio of GDP to aid provided to Ukraine. Estonia plans 600 bunkers to stop Russian invasion in the first hour. On NATO's borders with Russia, frontline states are already preparing for the next war with Moscow. In January, the defense ministers of Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia agreed to a new plan to build an extensive network of fortifications intended to deter and defeat the kind of Russian incursion long feared in northeastern Europe. Given their country's 210 miles of border with Russia, much of it considered near impassable thanks to extensive forests and wetlands, Estonian officials said the government is planning some 600 bunkers they hope will prevent a hypothetical invasion and occupation by Moscow. The war in Ukraine has shown that taking back already conquered territories is extremely difficult and comes at great cost of human lives, time and material resources. Susan Lilevali, the Under Secretary for Defence Readiness at the Estonian Defence Ministry said she spoke about the $64.7 million project during a Thursday briefing with journalists. In addition to equipment, ammunition and manpower, we need physical installations to defend our countries efficiently. Lille Valley said the small Baltic states have long been considered the most likely Russian targets should President Vladimir Putin be bold enough to launch an attack on NATO. 
If successful, Russian units might be expected to overrun the three small nations within days. These installations serve, first, the purpose of avoiding military conflict in our region as they could potentially change the enemy's calculus, Lilevali said. Counter-mobility and fortification measures have played a significant role in wars in our region in history, for example in Finland, and as the war in Ukraine has demonstrated, they are perfectly valid also in this century. She continued, the installations should deny the enemy the possibility to advance rapidly in the territory of Baltic countries and in case of military incursions, stop the enemy's advance already at our borders.